Hey everybody, my name is Jacob Kohler and I'm gonna show you today how I live stream a piano concert. I'm gonna show you what mics I use, what video cameras, what equipment, show you how to set it up and you'll be on your way to do your own live streaming concerts. So first things first, most important thing is It's a no-brainer, but in order to stream something effectively, you need to have a stable internet connection. It doesn't have to be the fastest internet in the world, but it can't be the slowest either. And one other tip that I've learned the hard way is don't stream using Wi-Fi. Stream using a LAN cable. Connect your internet with a cable. Uh, this will make the stream a lot more stable than if you go with Wi-Fi. I learned this the hard way. When you go Wi-Fi, sometimes, this, even if you have really fast internet, which I do have, it doesn't always stream at the same speed. It slows down, but with the uh, LAN cable, you'll get a much more solid connection. So definitely stream with a cable. The next most important thing after a strong internet connection is to have an instrument or a piano that's in tune and sounds good. So no matter how good of equipment you have, if the piano itself is not in tune and doesn't have, create a good sound on its own, uh, all the best equipment in the world is not gonna make it sound good. So let's start with that. So now that we have our piano in tune, it's sounding really good, the next most important thing is how do we pick up the sound? Which microphones do we use? Uh, there's lots of different microphones out there. You can spend thousands and thousands of dollars on great microphones. Um, I'm gonna give you the ones that I use that aren't too expensive, but they'll get you a nice sound. These are called Rode NT5 stereo microphones. I use these for recording uh, and also for streaming. Another one that you can try is AKG 451B. They're kind of similar, also stereo uh, condenser microphones. And so also, how you place the microphones is really important. So I'm gonna show you right now how I place them. As you notice, my piano, the lid has been taken off. So I did this recently so that I can get a little bit more distant, roomy, kind of open sound to my recordings and to my uh, streaming. So I have the mics fairly high off the piano, a good three feet from the strings and maybe 150 centimeters. Um, you can do it a lot closer than that, which a lot of people do. You can go further away. Um, you just kind of have to experiment. The key to it is that the mics are the same distance as each other. So one is not super close and one is not super far. And you wanna get a nice even sound of the piano. So you don't wanna pick up too many high sounds and not enough low or vice versa. So you wanna have to experiment with that and figure out what sound works for your piano, and for your room, and for your own personal taste. So now that we have our mic set up, the next thing we wanna do is plug them into our mixer. So I recommend to get a USB audio mixer. Uh, I like this one by Behringer, it's called the Xenix QX1204 USB. The key is that you get a mixer that has a USB out that can connect directly into your computer. If it doesn't have this out, then you're gonna to have to get another device. So make sure that it does have that. And don't confuse an audio mixer with an audio interface. The audio interfaces are great for recording. You record the sound and later you can manipulate, add reverb and things. But for streaming, you wanna do it all in the mixer. So you don't wanna use extra software programs that you don't need to. So with this mixer, you have all type, all kinds of reverbs that you can add. You can control the pan, the, the, the levels of each channel. Um, you can put compression on it, which is a really important feature to this so that you can get a nice clear sound without too many highs and lows. So that's something that you would do in recording later is add compression, but with this you can do it live. You can, so I like to put up a lot of compression on here so that my really soft sounds and my really low sounds aren't so uh, dramatic that you have to turn it up or turn it down. So I recommend to get one of these USB audio mixers. All right, so now that we got the audio portion of our streaming dialed in, let's dive into the video part. So I'm gonna start with this uh, switcher. The switcher, we're gonna plug our video camera or cameras into our switcher, and then this switcher is gonna plug into the computer. So it's sort of like a, a hub for all our video cameras. And the switcher sounds exactly like what it does. You can switch between the different video cameras. This one that I like to use is called uh, Ada Mini Pro by Blackmagic Design. It has four different channels, and just by clicking the button, one, two, three, or four, we can switch uh, the video cameras. And we can plug them in here on the back with 
an HDMI, one, two, three, four, it has an HDMI out or a USB out that you can plug directly into your computer. And Blackmagic also has a lot of free software that you can use uh, inside your computer so that you can set the colors and you can add effects and you can do all the switching from the software as well, which makes it really, really convenient. All right, so now that we have our switcher set up, now we need to hook up our cameras to the switcher. So you can use any camera that has an HDMI out and connect it to the HDMI in on the switcher. Uh, I'm gonna show you the one that I like to use. I started using it this year and it makes a huge difference in the picture quality of my streams. Uh, this, this camera right here is called the Blackmagic Design Pocket Cinema 4K camera. Uh, in fact, I like it so much that I recently just got myself a 6K camera as well, so I have two of them. I gotta get four so I can have all four going into the switchers. Uh, but I also like to use a GoPro as well. Uh, you can get a nice cool side shot with that wide angle view and you can hook that up uh, with an HDMI as well. Uh, but what's great about this camera is that it has a full size HDMI out. Uh, some of the things I've noticed, I've been using a lot of different cameras over the years. The HDMI uh, jack kind of gets loose after a while and sometimes it'll fall out or it just stops working. Uh, I don't think you're going to have that problem with this. This is a really stable, solidly built camera with great uh, picture quality and you can adjust the color inside with the Blackmagic software as well. So it's a great camera. I recommend it highly. All right, so now that we have our audio, our visual, everything is running into the computer, the last step is to set up the software. Uh, the software that I like to use is OBS. Uh, it's a free software for Mac or for Windows. Very easy to use. Um, there's plenty of tutorials that'll show you in detail how to get it going. Uh, if you use Blackmagic stuff, they also have a great software control that you can use um, that I use also as well with my streaming. So anyway, I hope this video helped you out. I'm showing you what I have learned over the years. I'm not really, uh, I don't consider myself a professional audio visual person, um, but I talk to a lot of people. I've experimented a lot over the time and I've kind of come up with a system that works for me. So if you want to try some of that out hopefully it'll work for you feel free to shoot me some comments or questions in the uh, comment section and uh, it's the first time to try to make a video like this but i hope you enjoyed it and i'll see you next time